All right, everybody, we just got done putting our ceilings in the project. And one of the things that I want to do next, and we haven't shown it yet, I'm doing the videos in a slightly different order, just really for no reason. Uh, I want to put some dimensions on my bathroom elevation here. And it occurred to me that I actually have a very different cabinet here than I used in any of the classroom examples. I have a single cabinet in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to swap these cabinets out real quick. And I can delete it here in the second in the uh, elevation. And here's my plan, and my cabinet has been deleted from the plan. Now you notice under casework, I only have that one cabinet type loaded, which means I need to come back to my insert tab, load family, casework, base cabinets. There we go. Uh, there it is. Base cabinet, single door and drawer. That's what I'm going to use. It's not. In my opinion, it's not as pretty of a cabinet, but it's going to be a handier cabinet for the purposes of this. Here's that three inch designation I was telling you guys about. Really, really important. Now, one of the fun things that we can we can do here, I think, well, I'm not going to monkey with it, but we not too much anyway, but we started with a 48 inch cabinet. I could put three 18 inch, no, three 18 inch cabinets, that'd be 54 inches, wouldn't it? Three 15 inch cabinets, that'd be 45 inches. It still wouldn't quite be enough. All right, so I'll put in two 24 inch cabinets. Drag and drop, spin him around twice. And the Revit wants to be helpful and try and get things lined up. There we go. Yep, that's it. One right there, and then another one right next to it. Now, I hope you can see how the grid, the, the highlights at the edge of the cabinet and at the front of the cabinet are locking me into place on where the, these things are actually going so that I know this is where they live. I'm going to use my, well, I can just move him. I'm going to take my sink. I'm going to move my sink. So if I zoom in, this little, this little uh, snap guide that I'm on right now, and I move to the other snap guide, which is the center of, you know, I'm going to move it to this side, this outside edge. There we go. And now I take the countertop, and basically I'm moving the hole so that he lines up with the new sink location. There we go. And that little guy. So here we go. Here's the length. Here's where the sink location is. One foot one and thirty-one sixty-fourths. That should actually be. That should be at one feet, and the length should be at four foot one, so that the edge only hangs off a foot. Uh, that's looking pretty good. <clears throat> it looks like everything lines up. Let me thin line it. Okay. It's really hard to tell. I'm actually snapping on the wrong spot here, so I need to move some things around. You can see it, it's hard to tell, but you can see as I highlight this casework, you can see how it's actually protruding into the sh into the sheetrock. This will give me some incorrect dimensions when I go to dimension it, which is why I'm fixing it. So highlight both of these objects move and it's just one side of the sheetrock to the other there we go same thing with my cabinet I'll pull him just move him away and then move him right back just like that and before I do that take my sink move my sink so that he's poked. I'm going to have to pull him out of the way to get him moved right back into the right spot. Use my align tool. There we go. That one's centered on the cabinet. Now I can take center him where he needs to go. There we go. That's right. That's correct. Okay. So now when I come to my interior elevation because I made because I made a copy instead of a, uh, a mirror. That's why this door is facing the wrong direction. So I highlight it, come to my mirror tool. I do not want to copy it, and I want to mirror it on the center point of the cabinet. There we go. That Now that's doing what, it want, what I want it to do, and it matches the example that I actually had in class. <clears throat> okay, on the annotation tab, the vast majority of the time, you're going to want to use an aligned dimension. An aligned dimension runs perpendicular to the first object that you select. 
linear means it's always going to be horizontal or vertical. It's not always going to give you the 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 two, it's not always the right tool for the job, but sometimes it's, it is. So nine times out of ten, just use the align tool and it'll be great. Now the uh, dimension tool works different in Revit than it does in AutoCAD. With AutoCAD, <clears throat> we select a point, we select a point, and then we come down. And so far, you're saying, but Craig, this is exactly the same, but there's a difference. There is a difference in Revit. In Revit, we can actually continue selecting multiple objects and have, a, have them all continuously grouped together and in a nice pretty straight line before we actually left click to say how far away the dimension is from the objects we're dimensioning. <clears throat> it's a little thing and it only take, it take, takes a little bit of time to get used to but it's really not that difficult. I want to do the height of my cabinets now. So I'm going to start with an overall. That's two foot seven, and that's fine. Then I want my toe kick. And because these are, uh, this is three quarter inch reveal cabinets, so I'm not going to dimension all the bits in between. I just want the underside of the countertop and then the top of the countertop. <coughs> Excuse me. But if I mouse through here, make it closer. Where is it? Where is it? There it is. It's kind of hard to tell, but there's actually that little snap right there. And you'll see it when you actually start working. Revit wants to maintain a nice pretty distance between its dimension lines and so it's giving you a nice pretty set distance between dimension lines so that things look pretty. Now this is going to be really hard to read. It's almost impossible to read as is so I need to make some modifications to the dimension style. First I'm going to use just use that little blue grip right here at the end just so I can pull that away. <clears throat> so I'm going to highlight a dimension Click Edit Type, scroll down until I see Units Format. <clears throat> I'm going to uncheck Project Settings. I don't need to dimension things to the 32nd of an inch. I can come back to a quarter of an inch. I'm going to turn on Suppress Zero Feet and turn on Suppress Spaces. Now that helps. That really helps. And then these little blue dots underneath the text I can use pull them out and it automatic, automatically creates a nice little leader so now everything's pretty invisible. <clears throat> I'm going to turn my thin layers back on so we can see how big and fat and chunky those dimension lines are. It's not the prettiest thing in the world because we're not fine-tuning what our dimensions look like. Uh, another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to place one more dimension from the edge of this wall which in order to select the edge of the wall um, it's like drawing lines for the for the uh, floor slab. To dimension the edge of the wall, you have to hover your mouse over the wall in dimension mode and then click tab once on the keyboard and that'll highlight this, this edge because I actually want the, the, the jib board edge. One left click and then I can come over until my mouse finds the center line of the toilet. Another left click. And then when I move my mouse down, this is the set distance in between dimension lines that Revit wants to try to be helpful to. I'm going to make this straight across and you can see that little dash line right there. Revit is saying here's an alignment guide. I'm pretty sure you want this to line up and look pretty. <clears throat> but then obviously my, uh, my sink is in the wrong place. Now I can manually move this by typing, by starting my move command and typing in three inches and having to do math. <clears throat> but you notice that when I select my object that I've dimensioned, that the actual text in the dimension becomes editable. I can come in here and look at that. There's a little rounding difference right there that is just not showing me. I can actually type in one foot six inches and now my fixture has moved. And so when I, you know, I click escape, now this text returns to normal. So super, super basic dimensioning of our floor, of our uh, bathroom plan right there. All right, uh, next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to uh, put a room, uh, deal with uh, rooms and room finishes and uh, make a room schedule. So sit tight.